Hello, it's Katie Parker. Today we're going to be looking at making a pendant. In this one I've put a 50 pence piece inside. So there we go. So this one, so if you've got kind of the special ones that they release every now and again, you could use something like that, or you could use a normal 50 pence piece that's got a nice date, a meaningful date on it. Um, it's also reversible, so one side's one colour and one side's a different colour. Uh, you can also make it without anything inside it. So I've made a pendant and a bracelet that are also from, of the same design, but you can swap it over and it stays quite um, quite strong like that. I would say if you uh, want to put a picture inside it, then you'd have to put something in it to support it because you would be able to bend it if it hasn't got anything of some support inside. So we're going to start off with making... Um, each side and then we're going to join them together. So what you need is 16 of your brick beads and 16 of your seed beads threaded on alternately. So and I've got a length of this is a um, fire line. I think it's eight pound fire line and I've got a size 10 beading needle. Um, this the length is around about 120 centimeters. Um, you've got a length on each piece that you can that you can use, so you won't run out of thread because you can easily swap between your pieces as well for the thread use. So all we're going to do is create a circle with these. So I'm just going to tie a knot. So just leaving a, a short tail. I'm going to tie a knot in there and create a full circle of those beads. And giving it a really good pull so especially when you've got kind of a shorter piece I tend to use a pair of pliers and just give that good pull nice and tight on that circle and then what we want to do is move away from the knots so we're just going to go through that next brick bead and come out of the following brick beads so make sure I'm coming out of a brick bead and not a seed bead and pull through so just near that knot, you might need to just use your pliers to pull through, like so. And then we can just give that a little bit of a tug. And what that will do is it'll pop that knot inside your beads. And then at this point, because we don't need it, we can actually snip that tail thread off and it's, it's done with. Okay, so we've come out of that brick bead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my work over just so that I'm working in the right direction and I'm going to come up the side of the brick bead and come through the second hole because this is a twin hole bead. So now I'm working on the outer set of um, the, the holes on the brick beads and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop two seed beads in the first gap and through the next hole and one in to the next and I'm going to proceed the whole way around alternating that so two in a gap and then one in a gap until you reach the opposite side so you've gone all the way around and you will find it will fit in evenly because we used a nice even number of beads to start with so you're going to continue all the way around and I'm going to skip on to my next pre-made piece until you get all the way around to here and you will finish on a single bead so I'll just pop that to one side for a second and you will finish on a single bead like so. So at this point what we need to do is we need to just proceed through the next bead, couple of beads and come out exiting in between two of those beads. So there, so exiting in between that pair of two. Okay. Now I'm going to use, it. it's entirely up to use which um, colour seed beads you use at which, which place but this kind of works for me and it, it gives you a nice easy guide. So because I use the kind of darker beads on these outer ones I'm going to use the gold, rose goldy kind of colour on this little accent. So what I'm going to do is I've picked up one of those other alternate colour and I'm going to come through to the next let that focus a second so come through to the next so I'm coming in between those two beads and all I'm going to do is pull that through and it just kind of adds a little accent a little corner on all those sections that have two beads so just proceeding through until we've got each of these little two sections having this extra little detail so thread just got caught on my mat so I'm just going to pause the video there and join you back in two seconds when I've got all the way around 
Okay, so once you've worked all the way around adding those extra beads, go ahead and make an identical one or a different colour, but the identical shape again. So you've got two of these, so we've got both sides of our pendant, so we're going to encapsulate our coin inside there. So we want to be exiting, so once you've added that last bead, that was this was my last bead, I just want to proceed to the next one just so that you've worked all the way around make sure you've got a good circuit so I've just come out of this accent bead the first one that I added now what I want to do it doesn't just ignore the thread on on your other piece because we can we can bring that into play if we need it so just line these up and what you will find is they fit perfectly together so let's just grab that there so they'll fit perfectly together. Now these beads that we added, this little extra accent on the outside, we're gonna create a right angled weave using those. So mine are rose gold, this rose gold color. So I'm just gonna pick up a bead and my thread is exiting this bead at this side and I'm gonna come through the opposite side like so and then pick up the opposite side and create a right angled weave so just pull that through and then if I bring that up to the camera you'll be able to see there we go you'll be able to see that right angle weave so this is a right angle weave that we've just created now just to strengthen that i want you to just go around that again so i'll just uh, lower that down for a second while i just go around that again because you always want to add as much strength as possible to all your pieces of jewelry so just continuing around like so and then just decide which direction you want to work in so I always prefer to work um, right to left. So I'm gonna continue around until I've come to this one closest to me. And then I'm gonna continue my, th my needle through until I get to that single bead there. So if I leave my needle in there, just try and let that focus. There we go. So you can see this is my right angle weave here and I've just proceeded through to the next bead. So this is the single bead that we added when we went on that, that round of the, the second uh, row. So this is the single bead and we're gonna add the same color as this bead and we're gonna do the exact same thing. This one in the rose gold is gonna kind of sit proud. This one in the um, the kind of uh, more pewter bronzy color is gonna kind of gonna sit more into the design. So if I, if it's actually easier, if I show you it on here. So if we look at this, so these are the ones that are on the, this kind of sticky out accent bead, this right angled weave here, and these are the ones that sit inside. And you're just gonna work all the way around adding all these um, right angled weaves. So I'll just do this one and then we'll move on. So we've got um, our thread coming out here, so we're gonna come around to the opposite side and come through this bead here, moving our thread across. It will be a lot easier when you do it, I'm trying to do it so my hands don't cover the beads. So, and then coming through that bead that we started with. Don't worry if they slide together. Once, um, once you've got that thread in and pulled it a little bit tighter, and then we've got that next little section done. So that's our first one, that's our second one. And then I'm gonna work around there until I'm proceeding in this direction again. And I want to get to about that halfway stage. So just continue on and then I'll move on and uh, meet you when we're kind of over here, okay? So I've got to that kind of halfway point and I've got an opening now where I can add my coin. So I'm going to pop my coin inside and it's at this point where we want to look at where the coin is. I mean afterwards you might be able to turn the coin a little bit but it's easier to do it now. So where my, the thread that I'm not using at the moment is this one over here. So I'm going to continue using this one because there's plenty to get all the way around to the other side. So this is where I'm going to use this thread to um, make my loop for my bail. So what I want is either the queen's head or wh whichever way you want it around to be where this thread is here. So I'm going to put my, mine's actually um, 
it's Peter Rabbit. I'm going to put him this way around so that he's sat the right way. So, And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore that thread that we just talked about for the bale because we can do that afterwards. And we're just going to continue doing the exact same thing that I've been doing. So just encapsulating that coin in now by just adding my beads to make those right angle weaves and encasing and trapping kind of that coin inside there. So I can continue making, that's another one made, and I'd go around that one and I'd move on to this one. And I'm just gonna continue until I get all the way around and then I'll meet you back here where we'll create that bale. Okay, so we've worked all the way around. Our coin is now nicely in there, nice and secure. We've got all those right angle weaves all the way around. I worked in the thread that I was using and snipped it off and now I'm working on this top section. So just again, make sure that your coin's the right way around. This is where the bale's gonna come out on this kind of darker uh, right angle weave and we're gonna work with those two beads in the center. So I've got it, got it so my thread is exiting one of those two beads and we're just gonna do a flat herringbone. So we're gonna pick up two beads, come through the opposite bead so through that little um, section of beads there. So now I've got two together, two little stacks of two, and then I'm gonna come through the opposite side, like so, and pull those. And then we're gonna add another two. And we're just gonna build it up like this. So adding two down one bead at the opposite side, pull through, and then up two at the other side to bring us back into a position to add the next set. So again, adding one, two, down this side. Just support it with your finger if you need to, and then up two at this side. So we're never going back down to the bottom again. It's always add two beads, down one bead, and then up two at the other side. So add two beads, down one bead and then up two at the opposite side there and we're going to continue that until we've got enough so that the this little bead section will come around and make a little loop at the top so I'll join you back there just in a few seconds and we'll show you just how to really quickly finish up So I've finished adding all these rows, so I've worked out, just counted these and I've added 18 rows, that's 18, not including the two that we started with, not including that because I'm counting that as the actual uh, right angle weave. So my thread is exiting out this side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at right down at the bottom, go through that right angle weave, the one that we began with, so I'm just going to bring that up there so you can see where that's gone through. So I've gone through that right angle weave, the middle section again. So there's quite a three pieces of thread through there at the moment. So I'm just gonna use my pliers just to pull. So pulling that in there. Now I'm gonna turn this and look this direction and find that bead at the bottom of my right angle weave there. So there it is, I've come through there. And pull that nice and tight. And then what I need to do is come up through that last bead here. So, and this is all now connected. So pull that nice and tight, nice and taut, and then across, so going across those two beads. So we're just kind of finishing, creating that loop and through to the other side, just making sure we come through. That's kind of like those two through that bottom of the right angle there as well. Okay, so and then you're just going to work that thread in, continue to work it in so it's nice and supported at the bottom. But now you can see we've got a nice loop, so our chain or whatever we want to put this on can pass through, and our coin is fully secured. So there we go, and it's fully reversible. It depends on which side you want to wear it or whether you want to put anything inside it at all. If you don't want to put the coin in, you just continue going round at the end and, and pop your bale on the top. I also made it into a 
bracelet design so that's the bracelet which is fully reversible too so you can wear that in two different ways so and this is one of the other color combinations so thank you very much for watching um, take care and I will see you again soon